Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. In this video, I'm going to be explaining everything you should know about salt. When to use it in your pond and when not to. How to give a salt bath. How much salt to use. The benefits and the drawbacks of salt. Talk to half a dozen different koi keepers and you're going to get half a dozen different opinions about salt. Some people never use salt. After all, carp are freshwater fish and it is not natural for them. Others will tell you that they run their pond with a constant level of salt and they believe it to be a magical panacea for every fish ailment. And pond problem too, for that matter. There are times when koi definitely do appear to benefit from a dose of salt in the pond or a 10 minute salt bath. So let me explain what I think about salt and let's see if we can make some sense out of it all. There is nothing special about pond salt. You don't need to buy expensive packs of pond tonic salt. It's just plain old cooking salt that you need. The only pack size that makes any sense to purchase it in are 25 kilogram bags, which retail for around £10 per sack at your local aquatic store. To add salt to the pond, you approximate your pond volume, then weigh the salt out into a bucket. Pond water is then added to the bucket and mixed up vigorously until it is dissolved. The mixture should then be dumped into the pond and if any salt is left remaining sitting on the bottom, run a brush through it to stir it in. For a general dose, use 1.5 kilograms of salt for every 1000 litres of water or 15 pounds of salt for every 1000 gallons. This is a 0.15% dose, actually a very small dose. If you're not sure how to volume your pond, then see my video on calculating your pond volume for some help. So what does the salt do? The internal salinity of a koi is around 0.9%. Koi normally have to expel large quantities of water from their bodies in a process called osma regulation. By raising the salt level, you are in effect resting the fish's osmoregulation system. The chloride in the salt reduces the uptake of toxic nitrite, which can form a bond with hemoglobin and become a barrier to oxygen in the blood. These actions can have a de-stressing effect and enable the fish to use its energy to heal itself or fight off an infection. The salt also acts as a mild irritant and it encourages the fish to shed and develop a protective mucus layer. Going into winter would be the ideal time to add the salt or at any time that you detect nitrite. You can also add it whenever you feel your fish might just be a little run down or just need a bit of a boost and are not sure what else to try. Maybe salt might just do the trick. There are some important things to remember about salt. Salt is not the go-to treatment for every fish ailment. Regular testing of pH, ammonia and nitrite are imperative. Never assume that the water is fine. Check it to make sure. If you believe your fish might have a parasite, then proper diagnosis by means of a mucus scrape is highly recommended. Salt can help with some fish parasites, However, there are more effective treatments for most common parasites. Once the salt has been introduced into your pond, it does not dissipate. It will remain in the pond until you dilute it and flush it out with water changes. Whilst it is there, you have to be careful not to use other treatments that could combine with the salt and potentially trigger a negative reaction. A very crude test the old school core keepers used for checking the salt level is the finger dip test. No taste of salt and the level is considered so low that it is not an issue. A digital salt meter will be needed for precise readings. This would be useful when you are attempting to maintain a specific salt concentration for example. 
Never ever use salt to de-ice your pond. Throwing salt onto a frozen pond will cause a rapid drop in temperature that is likely to be fatal to the fish. Instead, pour some boiling water from a kettle onto the surface and fit a pond heater. Salt doesn't do pond plants any good. Whilst it might not kill them outright, it is likely to seriously knock them back. Some people use salt to combat blanket weed. I've had mixed results and doubt that it is effective over a long period of time. If you don't want to dose the entire pond, you can administer a short-term salt bath. A dose of 20 grams per litre is ideal. This is a 2% dose. If working in gallons, use 3 ounces per gallon. To give the salt bath, fill a bowl with pond water and mix in the required amount of salt. Place an airstone into the water and ensure that the oxygen levels are maintained. Carefully transfer the fish into the bowl. A handling net is ideal for this job. Whilst in the bowl, the fish must be supervised at all times. If the fish is not stressed or rolling over, it can be left in the solution for up to 10 minutes. It should then be returned back to the pond. I would recommend a bath for any koi that struggles a little. Not active perhaps when the other fish are up and feeding, etc. The baths can be repeated every two or three days, but I would definitely use a fresh salt mixture. Baths such as this are sometimes recommended for newly acquired fish in an effort to prevent parasites from being introduced into the pond. I think this practice is probably best avoided and I am sceptical about the benefits versus the additional stress factors. This tactic should definitely not con be considered a substitute for a quarantine system. I hope that you found this video of interest. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell thing to get the notifications. Post any questions in the comments below. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.